Hey everybody, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412, uh, starting another week of NHL preview videos for you here. If you don't know us already, we are FSI uh, DFS. We cover a variety of sports. We do have a website down here, fsidfs.com, if you want to come and check out uh, some of the subscription packages that we do have uh, in joining our Discord. But let's just dive right into the slate here. Five games, Toronto's the biggest money line favorite, minus 345 at home against Connor Bedard and Chicago Rangers second best New Jersey third uh, all over under is pretty even New Jersey and Florida is at seven worth noting uh, the Chicago Toronto and Columbus Detroit games are leaning towards maybe getting to seven uh, before the games kick off tonight so that's kind of where we're at looking at the projected goalkeepers uh, Merz Lickens uh, for the Blue Jackets I do have him highlighted here. He is day-to-day. -day. He is the projected guy, but he is day-to-day. -day. Uh, he had an illness. He did leave his previous game. If he's not good to go, it's going to be Spencer Martin uh, for Columbus. And if it is him, I'm going to have a whole lot more interest in Detroit. Uh, I think that they're actually a really sneaky, well, maybe not even sneaky, but a good GPP play getting off of the heavy favorites on this small slate. Uh, Justin Wall uh, for Toronto, 932 save percentage. These are last season's numbers. Uh, 932 is very high, uh, but it was a small sample size. He only played seven games last year. So solid solid goalkeeper, though. Uh, solid team in front of him. It's going to boost the numbers a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so everybody else is pretty average to a little bit below average. It's not the greatest uh, slate for goalkeeping. Going towards the special teams over here on the bottom right. Uh, these Again, these are the 2022 stats. Stats. Some teams only have played one game, some two, some three. Uh, so I'm still using the 2022 stats at this point in time. I know there's changeover between teams um, and, and power plays and everything, but it's it's still a good uh, gauge to see where things are at. Toronto power play, it's got the best um, matchup uh, for the entire slate. Second power play unit uh, last year facing off against the 22nd of Chicago and it's pretty much the same power play unit aside from uh, the defenseman on it so it's still going to be uh, Matthews and Marner Tavares and Willie Nylander on that top power play unit so nothing's really changed from that uh, Detroit they're facing off against a very weak Columbus penalty kill and that penalty kill has remained pretty similar uh, as well so again another uh, tally to Detroit having quite a bit of interest in them here on the slate so going over here towards the line stacks, um, Toffoli, Hughes, Jack Hughes, uh, and Jesper Bratt. We've, we've already talked about this line quite a bit. We're going to be talking about this New Jersey line uh, quite a bit throughout the course of this season. Uh, they New Jersey is really nice in that both of their top two uh, forward lines all have perfect correlation in terms of power play units. So uh, Toffoli, Hughes, Bratt, they're, when they're on the ice, they're always going to be uh, skating together. Florida, to start the season, talked about this in a previous video, they're missing their top two defenders to start the season. They're missing Ekblad. They're missing Montour. Um, and if you didn't pay attention to hockey until this season, uh, Florida, they kind of went on a Cinderella run last year in the playoffs. They were the last team to make the playoffs and they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals where they did end up losing. So maybe they have that little bit of Stanley Cup loser hangover, which is a thing. Um, and now they're down their uh, first two defenders. They're 0-2 to start the season. They just let up six goals to Winnipeg. Uh, I do think that New Jersey is in a nice spot here. Uh, Jack Hughes, always, always in play. Uh, Tyler Toffoli, he got his price bumped up finally from DK. He was one of the missed prices that DK had at the start of the season. Uh, but still, you know, he's been shooting the puck quite a bit. Hughes and Toffoli are in one two in terms of shot generated for the team. Uh, Toffoli, he hasn't really had the points uh, to go along with it. Uh, but I'll take, you know, sh uh, shot floor um, anytime. So, uh, Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner for Toronto. Toronto, again, biggest money line favorite. Matthews, he has started the season with two hat tricks in two games. Uh, 9,600. It's fine for a price for him, uh, especially going up against this Chicago squad who might be having uh, Mrazic and Net. Uh, Chicago's defense, not really um, scaring me by any means at all. Bertuzzi's going to be on the left, Marner's on the right. This is the top uh, line for Toronto. If they don't, so they don't have full power play correlation. Bertuzzi, he's on that second power play unit. Um, but 
If you want like full power play correlation, you could go Matthews, Marner, and Tavares, or go Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. Um, you can also go with Klingberg, who is the defenseman on that top power play unit. Uh, Tavares and Nylander skate at even strength together. Matthews and Marner skate at even strength together on different lines. Um, so like one you know strategy that some players might do in NHL DFS is to correlate the power play, but then get different lines at even strength. So for example, you go Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and Willie Nylander. You're going to cover, you know, get exposure to two different lines at even strength, but you also have the possibility of the trifecta goal on, so a goal and two assists on a power play uh, goal. So that's one trade that people could do if you don't want to go with this full line stack. Bertuzzi, 4.7K. He actually is ranks third on the team in shots on net uh, through two games. Uh, but, you know, his ice time really isn't there. He's 4.7 uh, for quite a good reason here. And the third stack uh, that I find really intriguing uh, is actually going to be Detroit. Kind of already talked about Detroit. Uh, I'm going to have interest in them, especially if it's not Merce Lincolns uh, and if it's going to be Spencer Martin. Detroit also has been shooting the puck like crazy on their first two games. They have around 40 shots per game in each of them, and they're going up against the Columbus team that just bleeds shots against, not just this season, but in previous seasons. Like, they just always bleed a bunch of shots to opponents. So Detroit can have a lot of interest in them. Debrinkat, Larkin, uh, I put Cider in here. He's the defenseman. He's going to be skating on top power play unit with Debrinkat and Larkin. Um, the right winger on that top line is Lucas Raymond. He's okay. He really just doesn't have any floor with him at all, and he doesn't correlate um, to that top power play unit. Columbus, they are going to be without their top uh, defender, uh, Zach Wierenski, who got injured once again. Uh, so, I again, I think that Detroit could be a really, you know, solid um, ceiling play that's not Toronto, that's not uh, the Rangers or New Jersey. Going into the individual plays, um, now all these guys who are on the line stack, they're plays that I am interested in. Uh, there's just some extra guys uh, that I would have some interest in here. Connor Bedard. AK, uh, he is averaging almost five shots on net, or is averaging five shots on net per game so far in his first three games. Uh, on DK, you get that five point bonus, five shot bonus. Uh, but still, you still want a goal, you still want to assist, especially if you're going to be paying AK uh, for a guy. Mika Zibanejad, the Rangers. They're the second biggest favorite on the slate. There's going to be interest in the Rangers. I know I didn't put them in the line stacks, uh, but I, I have quite a bit of interest in them. You can see I got Zimbabwean here. I got Trocheck, uh, Panarin, Kreider, and Fox, all Rangers guys. And that's actually your power play one unit uh, for the Rangers going up a, against a weaker Arizona penalty kill. Now, Zimbabwean, he's that top line center, uh, top power play unit. Trocek, while I'm talking about the Rangers, Trocek skates on the second line at even strength for the Rangers, uh, but Trocek actually leads all Rangers forwards in time on ice per game through these first two games. He gets, skates on that top power play unit, uh, so maybe you know that's a little bit of value that you could get because the opportunity for him is certainly going to be there, especially at that price tag. John Tavares, 6.9K, already talked about the Maple Leafs. They're going to be extremely popular. He skates on the top power play unit. He skates at on the second even second line at even strength uh, with Willie Nylander. So you compare those two guys together if you really want that full correlation. Boone Jenner, uh, 5.4K. Hustle for Detroit. He's a projected goalie. He's not a super great goalie. Detroit can struggle as well defensively. The over-under is ticking towards seven for a very good reason. Uh, Jenner, he doesn't have a greatest floor to him. He's more reliant on goals, uh, but he does have three goals in two games. So he's shown that you know he's off to a nice start this season uh, on a 5.4K. Totally, totally viable if you want to go that way. Uh, cop, no floor. This is more of like a, I wanted to give you like a punt play um, at center who you know has been generating shots. He uh, gets power play time uh he can block shots it's not a great play uh but it's kind of the one guy that was sticking out at cheap center uh oh, i already got i doubled up on the burn cat didn't mean to do that uh willie nylander for toronto already talked about him quite a bit panarin so panarin skates on that second line with uh trocek here for the rangers but he also skates on that top power play unit uh, with all the other guys that i did mention i do think that Kreider could be really popular at home, top line, top power play unit. He's a goal scorer. He's not much of a you know pass 
passer to get the assist. He's more of a goal or nothing kind of guy in terms of the score sheet. Uh, so 5.8K, I still think that he's going to be pretty popular uh, just because he's going to be opening up a little bit of salary uh, for you there. Uh, Huberto, this Calgary-Washington game, I just don't have a whole lot of interest in. I can't really get a great feel of it. I don't really like either team uh, from a DFS standpoint at this point in time. Uh, but Huberto, 4.4K. He had a just a disastrous season last year after the trade. His offensive production went way down. Maybe it can come back. He had he has had a nice start uh, to the season here. Uh, we know what he is capable of as a hockey player. So when, like, when he's at his best... 4.4K is just way too cheap for him. Uh, we just kind of had that really off season after getting traded. Uh, but maybe he can bring it back here this year. Maybe we see his price uh, tick up throughout the course of the season. And then Coronado, uh, a teammate for him uh, on Calgary. Just got his NHL debut goal. 3.7K, skates on that top power play unit. And he's kind of been known for like uh, generating shots. Uh, so 3.7K, I'm fine with him. If he can get me three shots on net, maybe get lucky on one of them, it hits the back of the net. Um, awesome. Going towards the defense, Fox, uh, Rangers, it's going to be popular. If you want to go Jacob Truba, Truba has been blocking shots like crazy. I think he's already got 10 block shots in two games so far this season. You only need three for that shot block bonus. Uh, he's going up against Arizona. Arizona doesn't really muster a whole lot of shots, which is more so why I would uh, lean towards Fox uh, in this play in this regard. Seth Jones for Chicago facing off against Toronto. Jones, he's just kind of like everything in the peripheral department. Uh, he's going to shoot the puck. He's going to block shots. He skates on that top power play unit. He's going to see a ton of ice time. We're talking like close to 25 minutes of ice time. Um, so 5.3K, I think he's a little too cheap. I know they're a very large underdog against Toronto, uh, but Toronto, they can let up goals. Um, it, they're susceptible on defense. We saw it in their game against Montreal uh, in that shootout that they did have. So Seth Jones, 5.3K, would not shock me if he sees his name on the score sheet um, in terms of a goal, but more likely an assist uh, here tonight. Hannah Finn, it's kind of like an He's, he's Jones light in that, you know, he does everything. He's going to shoot the puck. He's going to block shots. Uh, I just have a little less confidence in, in him. If you had a decision between the two, I'd probably go with Jones. Provorov, uh, 4K for Columbus. Columbus, again, I, I said they're missing their top defender in Wierenski, who just went out for injury uh, in the previous game. So Provorov's going to take over his spot. He's going to take over his minutes. He's going to see 25 minutes of ice time. And he's a big shot blocker. Um, Sen... Detroit, like I said, they have averaged 40 uh, shots on net in their first two games. Columbus, they bleed shots against. That is the perfect combination for a shot blocking defenseman. Uh, he also gets top pairing and he gets top power play time on Columbus as well. So I really have quite a bit of interest in here in Provorov. Dursey, um, I, I was on Mosier uh, for Arizona. He didn't get the ice time that I was expecting him to. They really pumped uh, Dursey out there for a whole lot more minutes. Um, Mosier still gets more of the power play time, uh, but Dursey, he did get a power, he did get the power play goal in the first game. Uh, but 3.4K, I, I think I slide towards him a little bit more uh, in this regard. And then Siegenthaler, if, if you really want to get cheap. He's already got three assists on the season. He skates on the top pairing uh, on this uh, New Jersey defense core. He skates alongside Dougie Hamilton. He is more of a defensive guy. Uh, you're looking more so towards like block shots with him in that regard. But again, he does already have three assists, so he has been able to generate a little bit of offense on the season. So that kind of covers the slate. Hopefully it guides you in the right direction. If you have more questions, if you want to come join us, you can join us just for a day on FSIDFS.com. You just hit that subscription button. Um, if you want to do it, we have daily, weekly, and monthly packages. Uh, if you don't want to do that, please at least just hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, just uh, get us to 4,500, which is uh, so close, so close, and one of the big goals of us. So again, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Good luck in your contest tonight, and we'll see you in the next one.